the Lolo again from the old goat. Back to this setup. I've always had trouble getting the Clarkson workhead to align the way I want to on the wheel. Um, even though it has a whole table frame that swivels and the top table swivels to the lower table, you just can't get the cutter in line to do secondary clearances and to gullet the cutters. Uh, I have a block here that came with the machine and I had no idea what it was for. It's just not mentioned in the maker's um, leaflets or the manuals. But I got onto a site on YouTube called Garage of Tools and he too has the same model Clarkson grinder and he gave a demonstration that instead of having the axis of the work head at 90 degrees to the table as you do with uh, this riser block there's no swivel on the bottom which is a bit of a bugger. You use this block here to offset the work head from the table and it just makes all the difference in the world and now allows me to come in under the wheel with the wheel turning in the right direction to grind in behind to do the secondaries. It does mean that I'm grinding off the edge but if I don't go down to the cutting edge it won't create a burr because it's secondary clearances but it also allows me to use a little dish wheel which I'll grab from over here. Mount up the dish wheel and I can use that to do the gullets in the back of the cutters there. Uh, or a, a cut-off wheel as I showed a few weeks ago. So it's a bit of an enlargement of scope with the cutter or with the grinder. Uh, a lot of work I can do now that I couldn't do before. Yeah. Also if I want to I can turn uh, the spindle 180 degrees inside the housing. That will allow me to swing it around and use the angular markings. And this little plate here with the degrees in it just flips out. I can put that in between the work head and the block if I want to. And I can't see me having to be that fancy. Another thing that he's done, this is the universal vice mounting. So you can swivel here and rotate on the top. The top half is missing and the vice is missing. Something I never got with the grinder. But it's easy enough to make a circular plate here. And the work head has some drill and tap holes in it. So I could screw that mounting plate onto there, a couple of socket cap screws through from the back and I've got that mounted onto the double swivel here. That'll be a job for the future. But uh, I've often wondered why Clarkson made a machine that was so damn limited in um, not so much capacity but the throat depth under the grinding wheel and now I've solved that problem. One of these riser blocks, I don't know who heard of it or who thought of it, but thank you very much. And Garage of Tools, I'll put a link on the comment section of the video to his site. He's got quite a lot of interesting work there. Okay, please like and subscribe and um, back again with some more shaper and milling work on the locomotive axle box horns. G'day again. I was just about to break this setup down but I thought I'd show you first. The Clarkson doesn't come with a longitudinal table stop which is a big disadvantage when you're doing work like I was last week. So I brought in the milling vice stop that I bought years ago and have never used. Just a couple of packers to bolt it down to the table with the Allen head bolt. And this is one of the original indexing attachments that bolts onto the top of the table. You can set it to anywhere you want with the stopper bar. Quite easy to use. And I intend to put a thimble type micrometer adjustment over the bar for fine settings. But that adds one extra axis of use to the Clarkson because you can come up to a set point and it allows you to grind up to centre with the grinding wheel and uh, when you're gulleting or coming up to the gullet it's very very handy. So I thought I'd show you that before I break it down.